Hello, hello, hello everyone. So today this is another episode of the paper session. Uh, and today we will read a really important paper uh, made in 1995 uh, by Thomas, Thomas Aronson and Johan Grafström from the Ericsson Lab. And this is a paper talking about uh, comparing Erlang language and C++. So the title is a comparison between Erlang and C++ for implementation of telecom application. That's a really really long paper, uh, 71 page. So I will just uh, read the abstract and we will navigate through the, through the document. And I think the only really important part is the conclusion and maybe some annexes. So let's start. The software crisis. So we are that that's funny because we are in 1995. So the software crisis is yet to be solved. The prob the problem is that software development and maintenance is too time consuming and thereby too expensive. One way to try to solve or partly solve the problem is to employ new programming languages with properties that reduce development time and help in maintenance. Erlang, a language developed by Ericsson Company, may be such a language. The topic of this report is whether Erlang is a better platform for developing a specific telecom application, a SCF debugger, than the currently used language C++. To evaluate Erlang, a prototype for this debugger, debugger was developed. So that's 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 really important papers and usually when I'm talking with other people uh, about C++ and other language I point out this document. Uh, I just read a small part of it and I always check the conclusion because we have a lot of really 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 important things uh, to read there. But if you're interested, you can see uh, the first part, the introduction is nice. You have also an introduction to C++ and to Erlang, and you have all the implementation of the debugger. It's quite interesting, but it will be probably too long to read. Uh, the next part is comparing small test program, so we will just try to read it a little bit. We will read the Erlang experiences, that's quite important, and we will just uh, read some part of the discussion but the part we are really interested in is will be the conclusion and maybe uh, the history of Erlang, the areas and so on the Xenex uh, appendix uh, are, are really really great so let's start so this is the introduction uh, topic of this thesis uh, one of the most commonly used language at Ericsson Telecom IB today is C++ so it is object oriented and offers many modern constructs, much time and money spent on development, testing, and maintenance of software. A new language, Erlang, has been developed by Ericsson company LMTEL IB. It is quite different from C, mainly because it is it uses pro uh, programming packaging called functional programming, uh, because it offers multi uh, built in concurrency. One future project at Ericsson Telecom IB, uh, where Erlang is considered a possible alternative to C++, is the development of a specific debugger for telecom systems. The object of this thesis was to evaluate Erlang and compare it to C++, especially for programming the telecom debugger. Include in the project specification was also to program a prototype for the debugger in Erlang. This debugger will then be the base on which evaluation should be made. After making the prototype, we realized that some features to help while comparing the language will be handy. Thus, a set of small test programs were made in both C++ and Erlang. In the report is also included a discussion that summarized experiences and test results. The background is also quite, also really interesting because we are talking about intelligent networks and today we are talking about uh, artificial intelligence. And in IT, I think this is the main problem we have today. We want to put some 
smart things everywhere but sometimes you don't really not need that but anyway it's it's quite quite interesting to see the constraint uh, they got in the past so in 1995 and the constraint we have today so the background intelligent networks is our topic in telecommunication the networks referred to our telephone networks and intelligent networks offers more services than just a point-to-point -point connection for example charge free calls extra charge calls many participant calls voting by vote uh, by phone for uh, moving and so on the services are usually provided by one or several computer situated somewhere in the telephone network for example a customer to calls a number to vote in a tv show the call is switched uh, through the network as usual but at the other end there is a computer that takes a call instead of another subscriber this computer is often a part of the network as connection to several phone exchanges only sometimes itself a phone exchange the computer conducts a dialogue with you by planning pre-recorded messages and accepting digits as a reply when the computer has understood Tur's opinion, it records it and disconnects the call. Such, uh, such a central computer is called a service control point (SCP). The services to be performed when a certain number is called are stored in the SCP as programs that can be added, updated, and deleted on the fly. There is a growing demand for such services in more and more advanced forms, which must then be programmed. Unfortunately, programming a new services is difficult. Today, services must still run in phone exchanges, which are built primarily to switch phone calls and do not offer a user-friendly programming environment. To overcome these difficulties, Ericsson has made an interpreter running service scripts program carrying out the service on the SCP which in their case is an AXE exchange. Ericsson's uh, service interpreter is called SSI which stands for service script interpreter. The program it interprets it's a collection of interconnected modules. Every module can connect, contain data, and there is also a set of common data for the call. When phone call for specific service, SSI will execute the module one at a time. The set of module types contain things like conditional terms, counter stepping, number analysis, and so on. This is, however, still not easy enough to program. Ericsson has made a service development environment called SMAS. SMAS, maybe? Okay. That has a graphical user interface and store all data in a C uh, based database. SMAS uh, is developed further at Ericsson and Debugger, an application yet not provided in on the agenda. When a, scrapped, a script is defined today, it has to run on a real telephone exchange, and the only output produced is a log file. This makes debugging a tedious business, as a lot of knowledge of switching details and protocol is needed in order to understand the log. Debugging it is also expensive because of the IXC exchange used. A simulator enabling scripts to be tested on an ordinary workstation with good facilities to observe script execution will greatly simplify matters. A debugger written in C++ exists but it is not yet complete. Okay, so no, uh, uh, the authors will present the two languages to compare. So, Erlang is a concurrent programming language designed for prototyping and implementing reliable real-time system. It was developed at the Computer Science Laboratory, Elemental Telecommunication System Laboratory in Sweden, and has been available since, since the 90s. Uh, the concurrency is supported by processes that might be linked to each other, send asynchronous messages, and run distributed on several machines. Erlang is best described as an impure functional language. Erlang has many functional properties, for example, pattern matching, lack of destructive assignment garbage collection, 
and recursion optimization. The impureness of Erlang is its process pooling on inter-process communication which makes side effects possible. Other properties of Erlang are dynamic type controls, absence of memory pointer on the stable mechanism for trapping runtime error. No C++. So is an imperative object oriented language developed by Bjorn uh, Strustrup at IGMT. Today it is widespread and many different compilers are available on a lot of platforms. The object orientation is implemented by classes, a kind of modules with data and procedures. A class might contain other classes or inherit from a parent class. An instantiation, uh, instantiation of a class is called an object, and the whole design of a program is based on object sending messages by calling each process, uh, other procedure to each other. Uh, C++, uh, C++ has a static type control which might be overridden, as in most imperative language variables are commonly used and much of the memory handling must be implemented by the programmer. There are a lot more things in C++, for example, user-definite operator, implicit type convention, and construction to declare object and variable as constant. So, to be clear, Erlang and C++ are totally different. One is kind of low-level programming, and the other one is really high-level programming. So I think we can switch the introduction to C++ parts. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really a big fan of C++. I used it um, sometime in the past, in the past, and so that's not my favorite language at all because I really, really hate the object-oriented languages. In this paper, you can also find another introduction to Erlang programming concept, and so you have a lot of idea of uh, how to. A lot of examples to have an idea of how to use this pro this language to, for example, create a factorial. And uh, you can find, uh, I think at the end, some kind of example of algorithm. So, for example, q -sort. And uh, you have even a coffee machine using, for example, uh, a, a small spawning system. This is not gen server, uh, I think. This is just way to create it directly with raw process so you have an idea there and if you want to try i think it will work uh, the syntax is really really the same than the one you have currently in erlang today so it should work uh, easily if if i have time at the end of the of, of this uh, video i will try to implement them so anyway that's one important part of this document, the debugger. Actually, if you are using Erlang, uh, you have a lot of many different kind of tools and procedure to the debugger. Uh, you need to remember this paper was made in 1995, and at this time, the only debugger we have in open source was probably GDB and probably other small old software. But it was really hard to use, uh, and if you already use GDB, uh, you should probably be aware of the complexity to master this software. So, anyway, let's start just to read uh, the description and some of the features the debugger will have. To implement a complete debugger is a large project with a lot of repetitive work. The object of this thesis is to evaluate evaluate the possibilities to do it in Erlang, not to write the whole program. So that's that's really important because this is just an evaluation. It's they just want to try to create something that work. Therefore, graphic user interfaces are at low priority. Only a few modules were implemented and the database connection is not complete. So it works, but it's not complete. Uh, complete. Uh, what is an ECF? Uh, so, in an intelligent network, there are service switching point, SSPs, and service control point, SCPs. Uh, SCP handles a connection to the telephones, but has almost no logic at all. When a telephone call reaches SC, 
SSP. It asks a SCP to interpret the telephone number and execute the associated service. The part that performs SCP task in an exchange is called Service Control Function or SCF. When an operator develops new service for Ericsson SCP, it normally uses a programming tool called SMAS, which builds, checks, and stores the service in the database. Objects from its database can then be uploaded to SCP. Today, the services cannot be tested in SMAS. Without connecting your real phone exchange, using real exchange is expensive and time consuming. So, here's a problem uh, you have this uh, structure of the platform, and we want to. Uh, to get rid of all the connecting rail phone exchange so we want to simulate this and create a debugger or have an idea of what's going on when someone here is calling this guy here because the message for example the call we go to the SSP and if it's valid it will be go to the SCP and we have the SMAS to do the exchange with for example the different information and the debugger here uh, should be aware of what's going on during the exchange between the two uh, people uh, calling together and without inter interrupting for example the communication so that's my idea of the problem we have messaging we have connection and we want to plug something like a debugger to have an idea of what's going on without interrupting the service and if we can do that, we have an idea what's going on on all the platform. And we can have an idea if something goes wrong, what's going on. Okay, so services on SSI. A service is a collection of small programs, each containing a number of interconnected procedures called a logic module or LM. Um, a logic module is of a specific control type which define behaviors. All the LM can be connected to other LMs and all its data is structured. The so services are executed by a service script interpreter or SSI. Uh, okay. The logical layout of a program can generally not be changed during runtime in the exchange. Thus, an outlet from an uh, logic module i need to remember those acronyms uh, will always be connected to the same logic module as defined when the program was created in the service script interpreter the logical layout includes some other basic behavior data from a logical module referred to as logical module data in the following test uh, text a module can have different kind of data depending on the control type Okay, I think we can switch that because it was uh, as a big picture is the thing I explained to you. So we have the different data coming here and in, in and uh, here and there, and we are exchanging those kind of stuff, and we want to read what's going on. Demand uh, on the debugger. The debugger should be able to read the service from the database, choose the program graphically, and allow the user to set breakpoints, step, uh, single step, inspect variables, and verify that the programs do what they are supposed to. Preferably, the user should interact with the debugger through a graphical interface. Services built with SMAS are stored in a C base. A database which is very complex and therefore the debugger will use some existing C++ method from the SMAS application program interface to read the object from the database. So <laughs> the, the graphical interfaces are, are really really pretty old. Uh, that's uh, X, I, I, X11 from <laughs> the 19. So you have those kind of it's when I started to work uh, in the telecommunication, I was playing with those kind of interfaces. It's quite old, and it was running on a, on a Solaris, uh, I guess Solaris SunOS or something like that operating system. It was really really nice, and to be honest, this is not about the design. It was really functional. We can 
you can do everything you want with this kind of dirty old interfaces. So we have the button, so the, des the description of the debugger, we don't really care. Uh, we have the logic, uh, we have the information between the different kind of t uh, things. Okay, so the program windows, we can set breakpoints. And we have the final implementation, so here you have a screenshot here, so it's really really old, I don't know on what kind of system this thing is working, but I would, yeah, probably Solaris or something like that. Uh, many choices were made based on the use of Erlang, blah blah blah, we can switch that to prototype, Erlang code, so we have another design here. That's that could be interesting to read a, a little bit here. I'll try to explain how it's working. So we have the Erlang uh, applications or Beam. We have the socket code. So this is the process, and we have the C socket uh, code. So this is a port or something like that. I don't. I'm not sure at this time we have the port things. Maybe it's a beef. And so the process is communicating with the C interfaces, and the C will. This C code will encapsulate the code, translate it to something different, uh, and to be able to communicate with the SMAS API. And the SMAS API will probably talk to the database and do the different exchange be between the, those kind of stuff. So that's 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 ID. And so we have the program here with the interface. Okay, the function belonging to the function prototype in the include files will be possible to call from Erlang. So all those applications will be probably directly uh, implemented in the beam at this time, or the jam, because I think it's a jam. A call from Erlang, okay, due to the flexibility, okay. Processes in the debugger. Uh, when the program starts, a number of processes are activated. Call data record a process to handle the data in a call data record so user might change or date his data at any time if a um, logical model needs data which is not yet defined in the cdr an error message is shown globals an actions knows the current time and date and probably some more things which we hope to discover this process also keep tribes of ghost sub calls between different SA global data module, a dictionary of all loaded global data modules, and a customer data module. This is represented by the same process as the GDMs above, with the exception that customer data. Okay, so we have a lot of different processes uh, dealing with the data coming from, uh, I think, from the SMAS and the a C code. Let's move. Uh, we have the database handler and we have the process for the graphical interfaces, I guess. So we have the TCLTK and we have the different way to connect to each part of, uh, of the program. Uh, that's Kinda complex to be honest with you. All rectangle represent Erlang processes. Okay, running together as one Unix process. The stack indicates that there are several processes of the same type. So graphical uh, user interface and database run as their own Unix processes. Okay, so that's the idea. We have uh, another program like in C, communicating directly uh, into the jam, I guess, and communicating between each processes and just doing the rendering part. The program process, to give an example of how an Erlang process may function in more detail, this is descript described in the section for the program process. This process is chosen because it is the most complex one and because it is also the central process in the debugger. Okay, so if it's really too complex, we would just switch, but it could be interesting to have just, uh, just a small idea of how things are working. Uh, message sent when a new program is called. 
Okay, I think we'll just... This part is interesting. We have some feedbacks. So, understand the problem. It took us a long time to get a grip of what the debugger was supposed to do. There is a lot of documentation about SMAS and SSI, but it is hard to find. Brief introduction and we had a lot of use of our tutors at Ericsson. The next step was to find a structure for the program. There existed a half-made prototype written in C++, but we did not look at it because we wanted to write it in Erlang, unaware of how it was done in C++. To just translate a program would not give as much experience as designing a new one will do. Processes and concurrency. It seemed natural to split the program into many processes because Erlang has good support for message passing and linking processes to each other. It is also a way to reflect an object as something alive reacting on messages and not just container for function and data. So that's very true. I think we can switch this part here. Functional programming. Now this, this one is really, really interesting. Functional programming is seen as a something strange and ineffective by many programmers. Coming directly from a course in a pure functional language called Haskell, we almost found Erlang to be imperative. It is not, but many processes sending and waiting for messages, doing some sequential command in between, can give that feeling. This part here is really nice. What does it mean? It means when you are developing with Erlang, we have using we have a functional programming language, but it looks like an imperative one. This is not like Haskell, for example, or maybe OCaml and so on. When you are developing in Erlang, every process are just sequential Erlang code. And when you have that, uh, you have an ID. You know you can compare it compare it, it with an imperative language that's 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 true that's really true we missed the either function uh, order function it is not possible to define new operators in Erlang either omitting these features makes the language easier to learn uh, so some construction because slightly awkward so that's also true and even today it's not easy to add more operators in Erlang if you are coming from Haskell or OCaml and probably Lisp and so on, you can easily create new operators in your language. This is not the case of Erlang, Erlang because Erlang is a small language. That means we have a list of already defined operators and those operators will not move at all. And that provides a really strong stability in your language. It's why when you are executing code coming from the 90s in today's world, in Erlang, it will probably work. Because the structure of the language is really, really stable and really, really simple. This is not the case, for example, for uh, C++ maybe or maybe Java. If you are taking, for example, a code from Java made in the 90s, uh, you, are, you are very, 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 very lucky if it works it if it works like uh, like that in the two-day gvm um, virtual machine interfaces so we can switch that because i think i will do a small um, explanation on another paper uh, we have the environment we have the remaining thing to implement in debugger and we don't really care but no we have the comparison so don't f um, remember this paper was published in 1995 this is not a really really strong optimized version of erlang the goal of this test was to estimate some real numbers of comparison between erlang and c++ we also wanted to be fair in trying some different problems, so let both languages show their benefits and weakness. The, problem at, uh, the problems are to be complex enough to, so that time and space taken to program them will be long enough to be reliable measures. 
to either different programmers solving problems in different ways and with different complexity. The problems were quite strictly specified. Of course, the test uh, gave us more experience of Erlang, but the emphasis was more on the comparisons than during the writing of the debugger. Specification. We choose to make full test problem. Two versions of every program were made, one in Erlang and one in C++. For every problem, we randomly choose who should code in which language. The problems were oriented toward different areas. A simple game which needed a large search tree, lot of data and long computation, a number analyzer which is a typical telecom procedure, an engine for spreadsheet which requires parsing and expression evaluation, a numerical algorithm for solving different a differential equation uh, needing in iterative computation. Okay, so the first one is a game. So this is a kind of, I don't know what kind of game is it. Uh, four in a row. Okay, so just move to another one. We have the spreadsheet engine. Algorithm, blah, blah, blah. How to evaluate procedure, test programming results. Okay, numbers and comments. The numbers in table 1 clearly show that uh, what language to prefer. Erlang is on average 3 times faster to code on a third of the side of C++. In general, the Erlang code contains more commands which are included in the counts. The Rungi-Kuta equation solver becomes smaller than expected and should perhaps not be included in the table since most of the time was spent trying to understand the problem and the programs are very similar to each other. So I think this is the table. Uh, we have the idea of the time we did, with they implemented things. So in C++ it, it took 11 hours uh, to create the NRANAX program and it took two hours in Erlang. The spreadsheet program took uh, 40 hours and in Erlang it took only 10 hours. <laughs> and we have more than 1000 line of code in C++ and we have less than 400 line of code in Erlang. Four in a row. So 18 hours of development and in Erlang maybe 10 hours uh, and the Rungi Kunta uh, algorithm okay half half uh, half of an hour in both that's it's it's crazy so if we are a really really complex program and complex things to implement as you can see it will take for example half of the time in Erlang and you can go to <laughs> six times faster in Erlang. And the number of lines of code are just crazy. So, the small programs are not completely fair. It, uh, it was a larger program, you should use uh, processes in Erlang. This introduces the possibility of concurrency errors, which can be hard to find. Uh, though not as hard as complex memory errors in C++. The effect of static versus dynamic typing might also affect the numbers in large projects. Software reuse is said to decrease developing time and code size. This might not be reflected much in a test with a few on small programs as this. Since this is true for both languages, overage will not influence that much. Still, with all if content, it is a clear difference that may not be easily explained away. More explanation and discussion of the results are found in chapter 7. So we, we are now in the efficiency part, because we know with those tests that uh, Erlang, you can create a functional program in Erlang faster than in C++. 
and you don't have to deal with the memory errors as you can see all memory errors are really hard and complex to solve uh, and we have here's ex execution speed comparison and it's quite interesting yeah at this time uh, you know in 1995 uh, the jam was not really optimized and so C++ was uh, obviously obviously more performant than the jam but that's not so I mean yeah that's that's quite similar than Lisp for example uh, the average ratio of execution speed in this test is 7 to 1 in favor of C++, a number that is a bit unsettling for Erlang users. Yeah, but <laughs> to be honest with you, this is not the time right now. Uh, we don't have those kind of values uh, right now. Uh, the Erlang version because something... Okay, so we can switch. Uh, go to the next part of this things uh, and this one is factorial function comparison yeah that's practically the same graph so that's that's kind of kind of interesting because uh, this is how long is slower in execution but you can produce something that works faster and without the cost of debugging so that means uh, if you want to create something, you know, simulate an environment and just do some tests, Erlang was really designed to create this kind of simulation. This is not the case of C++, because C++ is more for optimization. Say you want to optimize one part of your Erlang code, and you want to have something really, really fast. Then you will try to find a way to communicate with this implementation in C++ to have a really, really fast way of um, interpreting the code. And that's how it's working. And currently, if you want to have, for example, a fast way to uh, calculate on the beam, uh, you will probably need to use something like a port or maybe a niche directly in your virtual machine to increase the speed of execution. So this part is for me one of the most important. So general experiences and impression. Erlang is a functional language which is good due to the light and easy programming style. Remember that. So light and easy programming style. It is not pure functional so and that may be a drawback in some aspects. We also missed a feature called either order function. What makes Erlang impure is its side effects. A process can affect other processes with messages. Yeah, that's correct. But a process in Erlang should be also used to protect from side effects. So. Just to be clear, when you are executing your code in the virtual machine in the beam, uh, this is a safe world. You are in a safe place because uh, this is a functional environment and you should not be impacted by other things coming outside of this virtual machine. And what is really nice with processes is when we have your processes, uh, you can deal with side effects outside of virtual machine by mapping all those kind of side effects directly in the process and this process if one of them is crashing it will not have a really big impact of other processes because if you did a really strong isolation between all your features only one of your features will be impacted and not other features the so message passing is very nice to use so uh, its implementation in Erlang is compact and powerful due to part and matching on dynamic types. External communication in Erlang is easy to use and is incorporating the language in, the ni in a nice way. Again, Erlang was created to route messages. And the process and the ports 
and maybe the drivers and no the C nodes were created to facilitate the communication between other software and language. At least as long one is satisfied with using sockets. Making calls to external libraries and functions right in another language is not as easy. That's unfortunately that's the way in yeah, that's the case for many other language. Uh, for example, if you are coming from Python or maybe Java, it's a nightmare to connect to something different. That's why we are using, for example, RabbitMQ and AMQP and so on. Because we have a really high level abstraction to communicate with other languages. And we it's a bit like a database. When you, are, you have a database, you can connect using a lot of different languages and the database is an abstraction of your data and your state. When you are using for example those kind of libraries uh, you can find a way to create this abstraction. It's not easy but it's required. It's really important to have something you know kind of really height abstraction of the data and so it's not easy at all but you can do it and Erlang provides you all the way to create different level of isolation you can have your isolation directly in the beam and you have a lot of risk doing that because uh, you are adding some kind of side effects directly in the beam or you can put it outside of the beam so for example uh, using a synode or ports and in this case if your program or library uh, is crashing it will not have any kind of impact in the virtual machine it's not really it's not <laughs> it's not true uh, not completely true but in theory it should not have a lot of impact Linking into Erlang is virtually uh, impossible. Instead, the Erlang people provide tools for creating a program that is run as an independent process in the operating system. The libraries and or object files that are to cooperate with Erlang are linked into this program. The tools also include functions for packing and unpacking function call into socket communication in the program. They also create an Erlang process with the corresponding function, but on the other end, of the socket. The tool so far only supports C, not C++. Yeah, that's not true today. We can use C++ as well, but we can also uh, use Rust and so on. Our experience and opinion is that the solution is not always wanted for reasons like efficiency demands or the target operating system lack of multitasking. Other people we told get to share this opinion. Also, when interviewing Ulrich Sandstrom as employee at Ulrich Sandstrom Parker Telecom, who has had some experience with Elon, he says that not being able to interface C++ code was the major reason for him not to use Elon. This subject was discussed as the closing panel discussion of the Elon conference in, Kins in Kista, Sweden. Erlang's pattern matching is powerful and useful when, port, uh, when sorting out Erlang's dynamic types and selecting data from data structures. Pattern matching also works as runtime type checking. Exceptions are another nice feature. When a pattern match or building function files, an exception is generated and can be called in any level up the call tree. Lists are easy, uh, are very easy to handle. In C++, list function and collection are defined by the programmer or an external library. This is very true. If you are developing in C, for example, you will probably need to implement your own linked list or something like that. This is not the case in Erlang. That's why also this is a great language. But <laughs> add, remember, we are in 1995. And so in 1995, I think Java just appears, uh, appeared in, uh, in, into the market. So that means 
Um, they don't add a lot of language like Erlang. You add Haskell, you add Lisp, probably Java. And so that was a bit different at this time. The new C++ feature with templates can simplify the construction of general collection, uh, though they are still far from as powerful as the Erlang building list. Correct. Erlang has dynamic typing, so the compiler does not check type at compile time. This has benefits. One of the reasons that Erlang was fast to code was that we did not have to define and cast type. On the other hand, not having names on types on structures members as drawback too it is difficult to access unnamed element in large structures no type checking at compile time feels insecure and might lead to problem in larger project since the compiler does not check types it is fast to write code that the computer accepts and then test it directly in this way it is easy to gradually develop program and build prototypes it is also encouraging for the programmer to get some acceptance from the computer on happy programmers program pages. That's really, really true. Uh, two weeks ago, I was maybe not during the months, uh, not October maybe, I started to learn Rust. And it's kind of frustrating to develop something and having a lot of error with the compilers. This is not the case in Erlang. You can do some mistake, but you have a lot of tools to protect uh, you against that. Uh, for example, uh, if you're creating a specification and you, know, you have dialyzer and you are compiling your program, dialyzer will check and you say, okay, it will not work. Or maybe you did something bad in the specification, but based on what I'm seeing right now, it will not work correctly. And at this time, they didn't have this kind of features. So it was more like Python or Ruby, you know, you can create your program, you execute it and you are waiting for something, uh, some kind of, you know, not the, the right patterns. Uh, for example, uh, you are connecting to a servers and you didn't really catch some kind of exception and your program is crashing. It was practically the same at this time, I guess, with Erlang. So you were able to spawn some process and the process was crashing. And so you had a problem in your code and you updated your code and so on. Larger objects in Erlang are often constructed as processes. This is a way to create modules with strict interfaces on active control compared to the passive object in C++. A drawback with process object could be the risk for concurrency bugs such as starvation and race condition. Memory is managed by the programmer in C++ and by the compiler interpreter in Erlang. Apart from releasing the burden of memory management from the programmers, it makes bugs resulting from lost allocated memory on wheel pointer impossible. Memory leaks by processes using non tail optimized for recursion are possible but easily avoided. The implementation of Erlang is under development. During this work, new tools have uh, become available. Not everything is in its final version. Erlang executes slower than C++, at least with current implementation. As we have progressed with this work, we have occasionally written down our opinion at the time. We have included this text to give an idea of how Erlang is learned and perhaps all we have formed some of the above experiences. The text below are left as unchanged as possible since first uh, written. This may worsen readability and layout. Please have patience with, uh, with this. Note that some of the impressions below have been resolved uh, later in our work. The compiler used here is the jam uh, 4.2. So, functional side, Erlang has side effects. Erlang likes either other function, Erlang likes curiate function, Erlang is not lazy. It is not possible, uh, <coughs> sorry, it is not possibility to define operator. Erlang is easy to get into. It is fast to accomplish something in. Erlang side effects are nice looking. It is modular. It has function, name, Passing and apply, it is quite easily glued. So this one here, yeah, it's not lazy. Uh, 
uh, you don't have those kind of things but you can simulate it uh, among the side effects I'm not sure of that this okay concurrency there are no synchroni synchronizing function in STD standard libraries uh, along as multitasking along features distribution uh, colliding change modules during runtime is possible Erlang can connect processes into layers which die at the same time processes are lightweight center process communication is easy to use Erlang has almost no time control so this part here was uh, fixed uh, the compiler is not public domain and the source code is not distributed oh sad Montage files in libraries, database uh, are needed. It is difficult to link with other languages. Much code is needed to handle records. The documentation is good. Most of compiler libraries written in along source code given library. Okay, so it's, it's interesting. So it was after one week. So after one week and a half months. Along as a good part in matching, it is easy to determine the state of a process instance and variables are used. Current function can be easily implemented with a slight modification. <laughs> it was I was saying there, so you can easily simulate this. The laziness and the current function can be simulated easily. Or created easily with your own libraries. Concurrency is a nice way to model objects as something alive. It is easy to make concurrency errors. Yeah, dead live log, it's correct. Uh, fast coding is made possible since there is no type control. Many errors are not discovered before runtime with the type control, that's true. Uh, the runtime error uh, message are tiny. Uh, just on this one here. Uh, that's also why we have the latest crash philosophy. Uh, when we have some errors and we don't catch it, the process will just restart with a correct state. And so we don't care about the errors. So if something goes wrong, the supervisor will restart the process and voila. Uh, the Erlang debugger is not, but it will be soon. Okay, the Erlang is a language under development might be a drawback. Again, this is 1995, so maybe 30 years ago this is not the case today uh, the simplicity of handling list uh, disadvantage Erlang since Erlang like prototypes with type control blah 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 okay the performance of a particular Erlang program depends on the optimization done by the compiler this is of course true for C++ as well but the kind of optimization made on C++ are more straightforward the optimization done also has a long history of research and development and can therefore be expected to change slowly and by small steps. In Erlang, on the other end, uh, quite different approaches may be employed to gain faster code. This means that programming methods to achieve efficient code may vary from compilers to compilers. Uh, the Erlang people do explicitly state that Erlang is a language in which you write code fast and then test and then change if something does not work as fast as planned. In this way, efficient code is frightened where needed. That's very true. In fact, when you have Erlang running in production or even during test, you are just playing with the Erlang shell. And when something goes wrong, you just put uh, your fix in your code. When moving programs between platforms and compilers, a program might suffer a decrease in efficiency. That is, if your program benefits from some special performance features, compiler or hardware. Usually, so it this would be the case. It is probably compensated by newer and faster hardware on our compiler. Again, that's very true. Uh, when you watch some Drew Armstrong conferences and intervention, it's a case. It was really slow in the past. So because in the past we had only one processor and running everything concurrently, this is not the case anymore because we have computers with many, many cores. And because we have many cores and many processors and so on, 
along is easy to spread on every core and it takes this advantage to increase the speed of execution and this is not the case in C++ for example if you have C++ you will need to deal with uh, low level thread and it's really 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 hard to deal with because you will need to implement practically the same scheduler than Erlang has implemented for its virtual machine so you are recre recreating the wheel here <laughs> and by doing that you are creating something that will not correctly work in in for one reason you can deal with something like Erlang who have was taken maybe 30 or 40 years to achieve if you are doing that in C++ you will create everything by yourself or maybe you will take uh, you will take a library but you will not have all features that Erlang is providing by default and those features have been tested in production environment in one of the most prestigious company around the world and dealing with like billion or maybe million of hardware everywhere in the world so if you want to create something from scratch Erlang is probably one of the best language you have uh, I think those kind of concepts we can move I think you have a lot of information here but but this is not the place so <laughs> this paper is really 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 important uh, you, you you should probably read it it's uh, about the von Neumann programming models and maybe one day I will read it and try to explain because it's it was really really nice yeah you need to read this paper it's really really important uh impureness object orientation humans are very poor at remembering several things at a time according to psychologists human in general can simultaneously manipulate about seven objects in their minds the power in the human brain lies in the ability to use abstraction and combine objects into more complex items and therefore it is natural to use this concept in a programming language that's that's crazy what what they are saying here the main feature of object current according to expression uh, okay a good object oriented language must support combining of object by inheritance that's crazy because actually this is a way to create spaghetti codes Inheritance is really nice on papers, but when you are developing something, inheritance is your worst nightmare. This is just impossible to deal with. And that's also why Erlang is a good language, because you don't have clear inheritance. If you want to create, for example, a behavior, you will create a behavior somewhere, like a gen server, and you will create an interface to this behavior. And the interface will only call the function directly from gen server. And you have a strong abstraction. And you can reuse everything you want in every place. So gen server, you can use it in any kind of different uh, of uh, different usage. In other end, inheritance is really hard because you don't know what kind of um, methods and attributes will be inherited. It's It's not good at all. Uh, but that's that's my that's my uh, own opinion on this subject maybe it's really really great but on when i started to work with object uh, object oriented programming uh, one of my main problem was the reusability re of the code and in returns look at really great and when you start to develop something you don't want to use it because it's become a re real nightmare. Uh, Impureness of C++, reusability. Okay, this is more about discussion. This is not uh, their opinion. 
and you have a lot of things to read. We have the limitation. Future. Okay. And I think we can move. Recommended guidelines. Okay. Erlang is a language most based on testing, redesigning, and testing again. This is fine and makes coding fast. But redesign interface is a no-no in a project of more than one person. It is therefore very important that specification agreed upon are followed exactly. And as a consequence of this, that specification are very detailed. This is of course important in any language, but Erlang lacks of prototypes and compile times type checking make this even more important. That's very true. Erlang features a lot of functions for error recovery. Process might be linked to each other and the error handling process could be modified to handle specific cases. Use these features. They might look as they are primarily for real-time application, but they are quite useful in other program as well. The model of layering processes give you program uh, better structures and make it easier to test. Since Erlang is not a purely functional language, any function called may have side effects. From the function user point of view, it is insecure not to know whether a function affects the state or not. This makes it a good habit to indicate exactly what side effect every function has in the specification. In Erlang, one of the largest, largest risks of creating various bugs is when sending and receiving messages. The concept of parallel running processes and asynchronous communication introduces bugs of a type that normally only exist in real-time application. These are the three rules that uh, lessen the risk, risk of these bugs. It is good to handle messages wrongly sent to a process with an other line in the receive clause. But the process might be able to handle the message. A typical case is if the process wait for messages at two places and at the first place accidentally pick some messages intended to be handled by uh, at the other. This problem is totally avoided if a process only has one receive clause. This part here, if you have a gen server for example, is really really important. Uh, when you are creating your handles, uh, you know, your different handle function, you should create one handles, uh, you know, one wildcard handles for every function. It will avoid to crash and if you put a log function, you will have the message directly printed out on your, um, on your console. That's, that's really important. And in fact, it will also avoid to uh, destroy the message queue because every time you will have, for example, um, a message, it will just drop out the queue. And that's great. And if you log it and someday you have some bugs, you will can come back and read the queue and say, oh, that's, that's bad. And we need to catch this and create a new function and match this data and do whatever you want. Always include standard process ID in a message. It guarantees that replies get to the correct address. It makes it possible to match further messages from the same sender as well as making debugging easier. Encapsulate servers processes in function. Uh, let function the same module as the process look, uh, look take care of message sending and receiving, okay. Uh, use type checking words in function heads, especially on integers. Use tail recursion and last call optimization. Updating a large tuple often is expensive. That's true. Okay, now the conclusion. Why when you should use Erlang instead of C++? Again, it's in 1995. Being a smaller but more high-level language, we found Erlang to be a better language in most cases. The drawbacks with Erlang are basically the absence of static type checking, problems to link with foreign languages and performance. Also uh, some smaller problems due to its young age. New things being added to the language, libraries and environments, 
little experience of larger projects and only one company developing the mod user compilers. Therefore, we recommend to choose Erlang before C++ on all occasions except when there are extreme efficiency demands, when extending a program that is already coded in C++ and too large to port in reasonable, reasonable time, when the application makes much use of an existing framework in C++ that is too large to port in small programs where a lot of direct hardware access or low-level system calls are made. It seems that Erlang should be particularly useful in programming simulators, graphical interface, communication programs, and soft. Uh, no extreme performance demanding real-time programs. Okay. Due to its communication facilities, it is also good for acting as an interface uh, and as an interfacing glue between programs as long as they communicate through sockets. When would we use Erlang and when would we use C++? When you would when would we ask a hired programmer to deliver the program in C++ and when would we ask him to deliver it in Erlang? We believe asking yourself the question is in this way will help to avoid the interference of personal language preferences. The project would be made from scratch so the language chosen here would be independent from earlier coding in another language. The graphical interface we made for the debugger was used uh, was using TKTCL. This combination proved to be very swift due to the easy concurrency in Erlang, but the usefulness of TKTCL might also be affected in our opinion. A cog vending machine. Uh, Erlang, this is a soft uh, real-time system. It is not very time critical. The robustness will, uh, will help. Uh, development and maintenance will be easier. Erlang needs to be implemented on this platform. A small operating system tool. This should work anytime and the binary should be small. The runtime kernel of Erlang does not help satisfying this demand. Most important thought uh, so is the impossibility to use system call directly from Erlang. That's not really true, but okay. Uh, you can create an interface. You have an example in Erlang and Elixir. Uh, you have uh, the NERFS project and many other one, but this one is well known uh, in the community. Uh, NERF project will create a really small uh, application you can upload in embedded system and you have some features to have access to the system calls and low level function by the way. Uh, finite element methods, uh, C++, this is a problem requiring a lot of computation and yeah that's correct, Erlang is slow. The computation is made using floating point arithmetic which Erlang makes, makes especially slow. A non graphics multiplayer games. Erlang, the problem as building concurrency. Use could be made of Erlang distribution supports. Development and maintenance will be easier. And that's very true. Uh, I think not all, but many or maybe plenty of um, multiplayer games uh, have a bit of Erlang. A ticket system for aeroplane companies, Erlang, development and maintenance again. Systems like this tend to be quite large and piles of money could be saved here. The distributed features of the fitness for graphical user interface of Erlang adds to its suitability for this problem. For fill in forms database programs, Erlang, on the condition that the communication between Erlang and the database can be solved well. The obvious benefits of Erlang here is maintenance, developing on graphical user interface. The SCF debuggers in Erlang. This is what the report is all about. There is some old code in C++ that has to be used, but the tedious interfacing should at least be less work than the actual programming. Since the debugger is fairly standalone product, it is less critical and therefore good place to try a new language prototyping anything and Erlang. Erlang has turned out to help fast programming and fast changes. 
testing has been easy due to the interactive environment. Often, prototypes involve mostly user interaction, which we started earlier is one of Erlang's virtue. You need to remember this sentence because this is one of the most important one probably in the document. If you need to you to prototype something and you don't have any idea of what you will, will need, Erlang is probably one of the best language you have to design it. Because, for example, if you start to design it in Java, C++, even C or Haskell, you will, not, will need to have a clear view of what you need and a clear design. And I think if you are listening to this uh, video, watching this video, uh, you are already a developer and you already know that no one really know at the beginning of the project what to do and how to implement it. Erlang has is probably one of the best language to use when you want to develop something from scratch because you will have one part of the services running somewhere and you will update it slowly and on your own desktop you will have the possibility to create a lot of tests quickly and that's really nice okay so that's the references and in this part i think this one here this paper here is probably one of the most important you have to read. If you are coming from C, C++, Java, Rust or so on, you must read it. Can programming be liberated from the von Neumann style, a functional style on its algebra of programs? This paper is explaining why von Neumann style is not so good and why we should switch to something more functional. And yeah, you need to read it. Uh, the history. This part I will, yeah, I think I will read it. From 1982 to 1985. So Erlang was more an experiment and they were experimenting with programming of telecom using more than 20 different languages. And the conclusion is the language must be a very high level symbol link language in order to achieve productivity gains. And so uh, the final answer was just give this prologue, prologue, and so on. From 1985 to 1986, uh, Ericsson experimented with this prologue, prologue. And the conclusion was the language must contain primitive for concurrency and error recovery, and the execution model must not have backtracking. So, uh, Lisp and Prolog were just put away. It must also have a granularity of concurrency such that one asynchronous telephony process is represented by one process in the language. We must therefore develop our own language with the desirable features of Lips, Prologs, Prologs, but with concurrency and error recovery, recovery built into the language. The first experiment with Erlang was made in 1987, and in 1988, uh, they are the first prototype of the PIBX functionality, and Erlang was escaping from the lab, so this was the first implementation in Erlang. In 1989, uh, we have the reconstruction of one tenth of the complete MD system. So they are 10 times greater gains in efficiency at construction compared with the construction in Plex. In 1990, Erlang is presented as uh, ISS90, which results in several new user. In 1991, first implementation of Erlang is released to users. Erlang is represented as Telecom 91. And they had the first version of ISN1, the compiler, graphical interface, and so on. In 1992, a lot of new users. And Erlang is ported to WX, Works, PC, Macintosh, and so on. Three applications using Erlang are presented, blah, blah, blah. 
and the two first product projects using Alga started in 1993. Uh, distribution is added to Erlang, which makes it possible to run homogeneous Erlang system on an heterogeneous hardware. Decision to send implementation uh, Erlang externally, separate organization in Emerson started to maintain and support Erlang implementation of Erlang tools So 1993. And this paper was made in 1995. So, this language was very young. Last uh, less than six years, maybe. Uh, okay, we can switch this part. Along technology. Yeah, this paper is a great introduction uh, for the people who want to learn a little bit of Erlang. You also have the history, you have a lot of application, example, and you have feedbacks. That's probably one of the most important parts, the feedbacks. And so it's it's over. And what I've learned here. Um, on my side in 1995, if, yeah, I regret a little bit to discover, uh, you know, I have discovered Erlang like recently. Uh, 10 years ago maybe and this program mean language need to be shared with many people because it gives you a really great way to create something quick and fast and to model it as you, when needed it's it's really nice and this paper is probably one great paper is to show you why Erlang is better in some area than C++ and other language because of the productivity and because of all the constraints they already fixed in the language. Anyway, I think it's over for today and we will yeah, see for one of the papers and just go to <laughs> just try to read more academic papers you will learn a lot and you will have a different view of what you are using just read academic papers and see you later bye